revision of the compensators in control system subject in the previous video on control system we have discussed about all controllers that is p type pi type pd type and pid controller in this video we will be discussing about the compensators okay so compensators are electrical circuits that are used to make some compensations in the cara of a system or the working of a system okay so there will be some system and along with this system, we will be using the compensator to have some corrections in the system in its CARA or in its working. Okay. Generally, we use compensators to have adjustments in the phase. So, in order to have some variations in the phase of the system, we generally use compensators. So, these are generally phase compensators. And the main classification of compensators are lag compensator, lead compensator and lag lead compensator. Okay, so you know, if you have studied compensators in control system, you may have heard like phase lag compensator, phase, la phase lead compensator likewise. Because generally, in order to have some adjustments in the phase, we use compensators. Okay, so let's see in detail about these three compensators in this video and that also to an exam point of view. Okay. So, let's see about the lag lead and lag lead compensators. First, we will be discussing about the lag type compensator. It's a uh, CARA, it's a uh, transfer function, everything we will be seeing. Okay. So, let's see about the lag compensator first. So, the first type of compensator that we are going to discuss uh, in this video is lag compensator. Okay. So, this uh, is a lag compensator or a phase lag compensator. So, the output that is here the output will have a phase lag with respect to the input consider that you are going to give a sinusoidal input then the sinusoidal output will have some phase lag okay so that is a lag compensator and they are also called as low pass systems okay they are also called as low pass systems why because the reason why because such a system is called as low pass is due to the fact that the high frequency sinusoidal input will get attenuated as we go on increasing the frequency. Consider that there is a high frequency signal. And when we keep on increasing that high frequency signal's frequency, the signal will get attenuated. Okay. So that's why a lag compensator is also called as low pass system. Okay. Anyway, just know that it is also called as a low pass system. And here the phase angle will be negative okay so they have negative phase angle also so these are the three important points that you should be remembering about a lag compensator if someone is asking you you should be saying that the output of a lag compensator will be phase lagged version of its input and also the lag compensator resembles to that of a low pass system and they have negative phase angle okay now if you draw the circuit of that lag compensator it will be like this there is a resistance r1 there is a combination of r2 and a capacitor which is c okay so if you write the laplace domain representation then input is v1 of vi of s output is v0 of s or vo of s then r1 r2 and 1 by sc okay so the transfer function will be output to input right so v out of s by v i of s is equal to 1 by alpha s plus 1 by t by s plus 1 by alpha t now if this is the transfer function you can find the poles and zeros from the transfer function right so by equating the denominator to the zero you will be getting the pole value that is s plus 1 by alpha t equal to zero you will be getting s equal to minus 1 by alpha t is one pole of this transfer function and the zero will be at minus one by t you have to equate this term to zero to get the zero value so the pole and zero are pole is at minus one by alpha t and zero is at minus one by t okay and also the value of alpha will be always greater than one for a lag compensator okay you should be knowing this also for a lag compensator if this is the transfer function the alpha value will be always greater than one okay next you can also find the values of t and alpha in terms of the components. t is equal to R2C is the value of t. Then alpha is equal to R1 plus R2 by R2. Okay, so these equations are also very important because sometimes you have to 
solve numerical questions from the compensator. So that's why this is a circuit representation and the value of T and alpha are also very important. Next, if you have to put, uh, that is in order to find the phase angle, you have to put S is equal to J omega in this transfer function. Okay. And you will be getting V out of J omega by V i of J omega equal to 1 by alpha into J omega plus 1 by T. That is wherever you see S, you have to put J omega. J omega plus 1 by T by J omega plus 1 by alpha T will be the uh, transfer function in terms of S equal to J omega. And also, you will get the phase angle. Okay. Phi equal to tan inverse omega t minus tan inverse alpha omega t. This equation is also very important. Okay. So, this is the output equation for the phase. Okay. Now, so this is the equation for finding the phase angle of this lag compensator. This is very important equation. You should study the transfer function, then also the uh, phase angle equation also. And if you draw the body plot diagrams of uh, the gain and phase for a lag compensator you will be getting the gain diagram like this you can see that the gain is having a slope of minus 20 db per decade okay for a lag compensator it is having a minus or a negative slope that is minus 20 db per decade and also you can see that the phase angle is in the negative side okay so this is the phase angle and these two are the corner frequencies 1 by alpha t and 1 by t if this is the transfer function then the corner frequencies are at 1 by alpha t and 1 by t okay so these are actually logarithmic frequencies okay so this is how you draw the body plots if you don't know how to draw the body plots we have already done a video on the body plot diagrams okay so this is a lag compensator so if you are briefing up about lag compensator this lag compensator produce a phase lag in the output so whatever input you give to that system it will produce a phase lag in that output for the corresponding input and this systems uh, is also called as low pass system or they are similar to that of low pass systems and they have negative phase angle okay and also you should be knowing that these phase lag compensator or lag compensators in general can be modeled with the help of pi controller okay we have already discussed about the controllers there are four types of controllers p type pi type pd and pid so in that for a lag compensator you can model the lag compensator using a pi that is proportional plus integral controller that type of controllers can be used to model a lag compensator and by using that model you are actually getting this uh, the transfer function and everything okay this uh, there is this plot diagrams and everything you are getting with the help of this type of modeling okay anyway we will not go deep into that how we are getting the uh, the graph there is the plots and all just know that this is having a negative slope and the the phase angle will have a will be in the negative quadrant okay so they are generally having a negative phase angle that is the most important thing you should be knowing okay so this is about the lag compensators next we are going to see about the lead compensators lead compensators are just the opposite of lag compensators so i would suggest you to whenever study the compensators topic study uh, try to study the three compensators together because you can study all these compensators uh, in a connected manner okay so let's see about the lead compensator so just like its name is suggesting the output will have a phase lead with respect to the input so consider that you are going to give a sinusoidal input the output produced by the compensator that is a lead compensator will have a phase lead with respect to the input and this lead compensators act as high pass filters okay its functionality is just like that of a high pass filter and another important factor which i have actually uh, forgot to tell while explaining the lag compensator see for the lag compensator they are having high, uh, the high accuracy okay so the lag compensators are having high accuracy but they are slower in response their response time is slower okay so their response is slower but they are having high accuracy that is the case for a lag compensator but for the case of a lead compensator they are having high speed of response but there will be a small decrease in the overall accuracy so if you ask which one is more accurate means it is a lag compensator but 
the speed of response is more for the lead compensator okay so this type of small small mcq questions can also be come for competitive examination so that's why i'm including these points okay now moving on to the circuit of a lead compensator it will be having a resistance and a capacitor connected in parallel and again then another resistance in series to that okay so here you can see that uh, they are connected like r1 and c in parallel and then r2 here then v i of s is the input v o out of s or v o of s is the output the transfer function will be v out of s by v i of s equal to beta into s t plus 1 by beta s t plus 1 okay so for if you follow some other textbook there will be some way of representation but the kara everything will be same only okay i have seen various text that is while i was referring this topic i could see various different representations also but the concept is same okay even though representation is different concept is same so it is having a beta st plus 1 by beta st plus 1 okay now the value of t will be r1c and the value of beta is equal to r2 by r1c okay so that is the value r2 by sorry the value of beta is r2 by r1 plus r2 okay so t is equal to r1c and beta equal to r2 by r1 plus r2 and again you are going to find the value of phase angle for that you have to substitute j omega s is equal to j omega you will be getting v out of j omega by by v i of j omega equal to beta into j omega t plus 1 by beta j omega t plus 1 and you can get the value of phase angle tan inverse that is you have to take all the terms here so this is a constant value so you can't you don't have to take it for this term there is a omega t so tan inverse omega t minus since it is in the denominator you have to take minus tan inverse of for this term there is beta omega t next term is a constant so it is neglected okay so likewise you are writing the phase angle equation i hope you know that so you can write the phase angle equation from the transfer function you have to take every term in the transfer function okay so in the transfer function wherever you are seeing uh, the omega values you have to take it and if uh, there is some constant terms you can ignore it okay so here there is a j omega t so from that you can take omega t then here beta j omega t from that you can take beta j omega t okay and the value of beta will be in between 0 and 1 that is it will be less than 1 only okay for a lag compensator the value of alpha is greater than 1 here the beta is less than 1 now if you see the kara or if you draw the bode plot diagrams you will be seeing that the lead compensator is having a positive slope of plus 20 db per decade these are the two corner frequencies and if you see the phase angle diagram or the phase plot you'll be seeing that it is a positive phase angle okay so earlier we had a negative phase angle for a lead compensator it is a positive phase angle and also here you are modeling the systems with the help of pd controller okay earlier we have modeled the system with pi controller now we are modeling the system with pd that is proportional plus derivative controller okay so these type of things you should be knowing okay so this is about the lead compensator next one which is the last one is a lag lead compensator the third type of compensator is lag lead compensator so this lag lead compensator is actually an electrical circuit which will produce a phase lag at one frequency region and it will be producing phase lead at another frequency region okay so it will be performing both the functions that is it will be producing phase lag and also phase lead so you can think it of as a cascading of a leading compensator and a lagging con compensator okay so then it forms a lag lead compensator both the circuits should be there okay so if you draw the circuit diagram of a lag lead compensator it will be like this there is a parallel combination and also there is a series combination just like we are we have seen separately for the lag and lead here there is both okay and if you write the transfer function you will be getting v out of s by v i of s equal to just remember that these are the individual transfer functions of the 
leading and the lagging so this is for lagging part this is the leading part okay so it is beta s t1 plus 1 by beta s t1 plus 1 okay and here 1 by alpha s plus 1 by t2 by s plus 1 by alpha t2 okay so you don't have to uh, study this by heart because you already know the transfer function of a leading compensator and a lagging so you just have to write it in a cascade for cascaded form okay and here alpha into beta its product will be equal to 1 and t1 equal to r1 c1 and t2 equal to r2 c2 and also you can rewrite this transfer function in this form v out of s by v i of s equal to s plus 1 by t1 by s plus 1 by beta t1 and s plus 1 by t2 by s plus 1 by alpha t2 okay now you can find the poles and zeros by equating the transfer function to the its numerator and denominator with zeros respectively and if you draw the diagram of a lag lead compensator it will be looking like this see here this portion corresponds to the lead compensator and this corresponds to the lag so this is the leading portion or at this frequency region the compensator will be having leading effect here it will be having lagging effect and these are the various corner frequencies so these are again this portion is individually for a lead compensator and this is for a lag compensator okay so this is a lag lead compensator and here we can model the system using a pid controller okay so that is all about a lag lead compensator we have discussed in this video about lag compensator lead compensator and lag lead compensator okay so these are these devices or these electrical circuits called compensators we generally use to have some changes in the phase that is whether we want to increase or uh, whether we want to lead the phase or lag the phase of a system's output we use this type of compensators for producing a lag in the phase we use lag compensator for producing a lead in the phase of the output we use a lead compensator if you want to have uh, variations uh, in the phase at some portion there is leading some portion there is lagging we can use a lag lead compensator because it performs both the functions okay so we have seen uh, in this video the brief about the lag lead and lag lead compensator its circuits its diagram the bond day plot it is phase and gain gain diagrams sorry phase and uh, yeah phase and gain diagrams and the transfer functions we have seen okay so i am really hoping that you understood the concept so this was a pure exam point of view video for control system compensators topic so if you found it useful please to give it a thumbs up and also share it with your friends and if you want more videos please to subscribe to the channel thanks for watching and keep on watching